Hi guys, today I'm gonna to show you how I made this 24 segment bowl. And in addition, I'm gonna take you step by step on how I put the finish on this bowl. Let's check it out. All right, so this is my second bowl in my three bowl series. I did the 16 uh, segment, which is 16 segments around on each layer. Uh, this one is a 24 closed segment bowl. And I've already finished up the 24 open segment bowl, which you will see later on. But today I'm gonna go through how I made this bowl. And I also extended my finishing section. So I'm gonna show you step-by-step step on how I put this finish on this bowl here. And I'm sure you're gonna like it. So let's get started. To start building this bowl, I'm working on the base first. Now, all of my bases, I try to use segmented pieces, and then I use um, some type of resin in the center. You'll see that in the foreground, I have a ring there that has an open section in the center automatically. On those rings, I can glue them all up together at one time. Now, on this base, it comes closed in the center, and a lot of times it's much easier to glue up half a side, 12 of the 24, and then 12 again. And then once they're all glued up, you can sand them smooth so that they fit flush against each other and make a nice tight bond. With both sides dried, uh, I take that on over to the sander and sand that down smooth so that both pieces will fit together very flush. And I just apply glue to each side and use a clamp to keep it together until the glue dries. With the ring completely assembled, I can now drill out the center using a Forstner bit uh, for my epoxy resin pour. Now, I like to use the epoxy in the center because it doesn't expand or contract, so it, uh, it also gives a nice little finish to the bottom of the bowl. So to prepare the ring for the resin pour, I use blue tape on the bottom to seal it up. And then what I'm going to use is I'm going to use the plastic that we use to wrap pallets or um, in shipping. And I'm just gonna wrap that all the way around the entire ring. Once I've uh, put enough layers on there and worked my way around the entire ring, I will then take a razor blade and cut out the center section of that so that I can make my resin pour. I find that this stuff works way better than just using uh, packing tape. Uh, it seems to seal it up really nice and I have very little uh, leakage from the resin uh, when I do make my pours. As you can see here, I have two bases to uh, fill in the center section with resin. So once my resin is mixed up, uh, the resin uh, comes out quite clear. So I'm adding some pearlescent uh, white to this and that's going to make it more opaque. And I think that looks much better than just having a, a clear bottom on it. I have tried different methods for gluing up the rings and uh, I used to use band clamps but I found that they sort of twisted them up and made them uh, slight ovalish. So uh, I started to use rubber bands so I bought a bunch of different sized rubber bands and I find that this gives equal pressure all the way around. So for my smaller rings like this, I just lay them out, put the glue all across, go ahead and put them together and then once I have that all together. I can wrap the rubber band around the ring. Now again, for the smaller rings, I use this method here that works on these first three rows. Once the ring gets bigger than my hand, where I can't hold on to the entire ring while I'm stretching a rubber band, I employ a different method, uh, which I will show you next. Now once the rings get too large for my hands to hold on to, I employ a different method of uh, gluing up the rings. And I find that this one works really well, at least for me it works really well. And I take all of the segmented pieces and I put them in the order that they need to go. And I lay down some blue tape with the sticky side up. And I will use the outside of each segment, which becomes the outside of the ring, to lay that down on top of the sticky part of the tape and hold them in place as you see right here. Then once they're all in place, I just take some glue and put in between each of the openings, the gaps there, and spread the glue with just a um, um, throwaway brush there in between 
each of the segmented pieces and I make sure that I get a good amount of glue on there. I don't um, scrimp on the glue. If you have extra glue that comes out the sides, it's easy enough to clean up, but then it's much better to have uh, plenty of glue in between the joints. Once all the glue is spread out and inside the ring, I just roll up the ring, tape it together, and then now I can put rubber bands around it relatively easy. And I just keep putting one rubber band after another after another until I get um, a number that just feels secure because as you put a large number of rubber bands on there, they're, they exert a lot of pressure onto that and it seals it up pretty good. Now I have seen some people just use the tape to hold it together and um, I'm still leery of that. I like to have some pressure on the glue joints but I don't need excessive pressure like you get with band clamps. And I used to use the band clamps and I have a lot of uh, various sized band clamps but they're basically sitting here and not being used now because uh, they just sort of made the rings more of an oval and I wasn't liking that. And then true that when you start turning it, you're gonna turn them perfectly round anyway. So the big thing is when you first start out, how much it wobbles. But uh, I find this works pretty well for me and uh, it's a method that I've been using for uh, the last three or four bowls and uh, I like the way that everything comes together and it's a fast method too so that when you get you know when you get 48 segmented pieces there you gotta be rather quick with the glue up and uh, this allows you to be rather fast now one of the things that I didn't show you on the other rings that I glued up is that once I have the rubber bands all around the rings I put wax paper on top and bottom and then I put a board there to hold it down flat and I will then put some weight on top of this board and this keeps the rings all flat so that uh, when I go to sanding it takes relatively a little sanding. Now there are many ways to sand the rings flat and fortunately for me I have a nice drum sander that I can use. To start the process I will take my rings and put a chalk line all the way around the ring on both sides and I will sand until that chalk line is completely gone on all the segmented pieces. Once that happens, I flip it over, do the same thing on the other side, and once both the lines are gone on both sides, I know that piece is to the dimension that I want. Now, I don't worry so much about having all of these pieces exactly the same, because once you glue them all up together, if one is off by a 64th or even a 32nd, nobody's really gonna notice the difference. So my main criteria is just to get all of the sides smooth and once that happens and I set them aside and keep working on the other ones until everything is flattened out and then it's set to glue up. The first thing I glue up is my base to my first ring and my objective here is to try and get that circle in the center of the first ring and as you will see later on I, uh, I failed miserably at that. But even if it's off-center a little bit, I don't mind that so much, uh, but I do try my best to get it as centered as possible. With that in mind, I apply glue to the ring. I'm going to set it down and measure on the inside from the ring in four different directions. Uh, I will try to line them up all with the darker parts of the ring because I have four uh, center sections on the dark parts of the rings that are at northeast, south, and west. So in order to line them all up, I use the same method that I showed in my 16 segment turning. Uh, if you want to see that video, it should be popping up at the top right hand corner of the screen there. Now using balsa pieces, I just super glue them in place once I get the rings lined up. So I try to measure the rings in four different directions and you know generally consider it like north, east, south, and west. Uh, just like the compass settings. And once I have that lined up, I will draw a line around the ring that is below the one that I'm lining up. And then I will make two hash marks on each side and number them so that I know that they go together. And then that way, as I start assembling and gluing it up, I can just do one after the other. Now most of the time for a bowl, I will glue up one section and then the other. So I'll glue up like the top three or four rings and I'll glue up the bottom three or four rings. Uh, so that's the, that's the method that I use to progress, but generally I start with the widest ring first and work my way on up to the smaller ones because it's much easier to add weight and have it distribute the pressure out uh, away from the rings rather than coming into the rings. 
So here you can see that I got my top four rings in place and I'm working on my bottom three rings and the one ring is already attached to the base. I've already glued in my little um, balsa pieces so that I have the locations to fit that in and make sure they don't move once I put all the weight down on everything. And I just continue that process until everything is done. Laying down a piece of glue, putting a ring on in place and make sure it's lined up laying down some more glue, putting another ring, and so on and so forth until I'm done. With the bowl glued up off the lathe, I take the cold jaws and attach it to the top of the bowl. So this way I can go ahead and put my sacrificial piece on the bottom, glue that on. And my idea here is that by doing it this way, it's going to line up everything automatically. And um, it works to an extent, but not as, not as well as I would like it to do. And I've actually found another method since this video so I will be showing you that later on in future videos okay so on my bowls what I like to do is I like to put them between center so I use a piece at the back and it's on the live end so it, it can rotate around with the bowl and I start with my outermost piece and start trimming it down so that it matches up the next piece below it and then I work on the next piece and match it up to the piece below that the next piece and the piece below that and I continue this all the way down the bowl. I get it roughly to the shape that I want and so that everything is relatively smooth and then I go over and smooth it out a little bit more and sometimes I put it to the finished size and the finished shape that I want before I work it on the inside. Uh, sometimes I leave a little extra there just so I can come back to it later on but I like to get the outside done first before I start working on the inside that, uh, that seems to be easier for me. Now this particular bowl is relatively easy because it's sort of a cone shape and it's easy to get to the, all the stuff on the inside but if you had more of a base structure uh, you would definitely have to glue up pieces at a time, trim out the inside, glue more pieces on, trim out the inside, glue more pieces on, trim out the inside like that because eventually it's going to be real difficult to get to the inside of your bowl. Here I can so I'm going to work on my outside first, get that all done and then move on over to the inside of the bowl. So now with the outside pretty close to the shape that I wanted, I might touch it up a little bit, but it, it is pretty uh, close to finishing, finish where it's at. I'm going to start working on the inside. In the inside, I do exactly the same. I start working on the outside and the outside ring, working towards the inner rings. And again, I make one to angle into the other, to angle into the other, and so on and so forth, down to the, the very center here and my base. Now, as you can see, the way that this is turning that, my center resin pour is nowhere near um, in the center of my piece here, but um, you know, I just, you never tell people what you're working on until it's done, and so, uh, you know, I never really wanted it in the center, actually. I wanted to make it sort of a rising moon type thing. Um, at least that that's the story that I'm gonna go with uh, once this is all done. But, uh, I continue working on my next bowl that I actually did after this, like I said, uh, that came out pretty close to center and I think that uh, I may have a way of making sure that's center all the time. So everything's a learning process, I just enjoy doing each one of them and uh, uh, you learn every time. Okay, so I have my bowl very close to my final shape and uh, what I'm going to do here now is switch over to a negative rake scraper and clean up the inside of that. Now I find that a negative rake scraper really gives me a nice finish. Um, I can do the same thing with a pool, basically a pool cut using the bowl gouge has a negative rake or as a scraper I should say, not a negative rake but has a scraper and that does pretty much a, a good job too and you'll see that I will switch back and forth between the two on these final cuts uh, to my bowl size. Now all I'm doing here is I'm trimming up the bowl to get it a uniform thickness all the way down to the bottom and once I have that and everything is smooth and flat I will uh, commence to the sanding stage of, of the bowl finishing and uh, of course we all know how much uh, fun that truly is. So, this is right now cutting it is the fun part most enjoyable but uh, eventually we always have to end up sanding which uh, I don't know anybody that really likes sanding uh, but I do have to say that sanding on a lathe is much easier than sanding any uh, flat work so um, at least there is that. Okay just so you know um, 
I actually have already sanded this bowl down, both the outside and inside. Uh, I started with 80 grit and worked my way down to 600. I spared you all of that. I, I wish I could have fast forwarded it for myself, but I had to live through that. So um, where I'm at now is I'm getting ready to put the finish on. So the first thing I'm gonna do is, if I can get this lid off here, which you can't see off camera, is I'm gonna use my land's sanding sealer and uh, get that all on here and seal up this wood. Now, especially Wingate is a rather porous wood and uh, not the easiest to work with, but it is a nice dark wood and has a very good contrasting characteristics with, uh, with maple. So I do like that. Sorry, I don't have a lot of space here to oh, yeah, put it right there. Put this bottle. So I use the sanding sealer just to seal up the wood um, before I'm gonna move on to the other stuff that I will be using here. Now, if you watch my earlier bowl um, videos, I like to use, also on my bowls, I like to use um, rubbing varnish, basically put that in, wipe on varnish and um, that works quite well but um, I have found that uh, this met the, with the axe paste and sanding sealer actually works very well too and um, has a pretty nice finish to it and the nice thing about it is that it's quick and um, food safe although you know the wipe on varnish too most, most finishes are food safe once they're dry, but they do have a tendency to peel off or uh, work off, whereas the Axe does not. So it's really, really good stuff. If you haven't tried it, I suggest you check out the link below and see the 10% uh, off I think you can get for your first order with them. If you just use my code down there, and I think you're gonna like the stuff once you use it. If you're like me, you'll just continue to use it because it really does make life easy. It just makes a beautiful finish. And I've actually started using it on a lot of different things, not just um, bowls and those turnings. I used it used on pins and of course bowls. And um, it can be used on other stuff that you can rub it in. Of course, the other way you'd have to Rub it in yourself to create the heat and then buff it, which is not quite as easy. So I'm gonna crank this thing up a little bit. Get a little bit of buffing action going here. This is just with the sanding sealer on it. You can see that looks pretty good already. So I'm liking, liking all of that, but I'm gonna put more on here. So. Now the sanding sealer doesn't take much, and uh, I, I think in the instructions they, they recommend that you not use large quantities of it or pull it up. So again, this is still the application cloth that I'm using. And so I'm using the slower speed. And then once I get to the buffing cloth, I'm, I'm bringing it up about 800 RPM right now, is what it's at. And that's enough to buff it down and heat it up, get it set in there, get it dry, get it all off. Get it ready for the next step. So the next thing I'm gonna be using is the Axe sanding paste. Let me make sure you can see that. Yes, you can. I'll be using that. And again, um, I've recently started using this. I finally ordered some 
I seen other people using it and thought, well, I should probably give this a try. And I'm really glad that I did. So this is an embrace of about a thousand. I think it says thousand or twelve hundred, something like that. So it's a nice little abrasive paste. And it doesn't take much at all uh, to put on there, but it does do the job quite well. And again, I do have a code in the captions below so that you can order some of this from them directly. It's the only way that you can get it and um, save yourself a little money just to try it out. All right, so I'm bringing my speed to almost a thousand. Yeah, 972 actually is what I have it at. So all I'm trying to do is just get rid of all of the stuff on the bowl. That's what this doing is getting all of that paste off. Now, if you want to, you can use a paper towel for this. I'd recommend the blue paper towel. But I have so many old t-shirts that I just decided to put them in use. And you see that I pulled off quite a bit of stuff. I'm just going to fold this over on itself and run through again to pull some more off. See that you know quite a bit comes off on that. Let me just stop this for a sec so we take a look at it. And that's looking really, really nice. Now I can still feel a little grit on it, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna buff it a little bit more just to get everything off there. And I got it up to about 1,200. Still got quite a bit off that round, so I'm gonna keep wiping until I don't see any more of that stuff on my rag. looking spectacular okay so now I'm going to use some of the polishing compound on here getting a new cloth ready for the polishing compound Let's see if I have some clean areas on this one to apply it yes I do brand new one there. So uh, the next thing I'm going to use is the Axe Polishing Paste Restorer. Axe Polishing Restoring Paste, I should say it correctly. And I'll just start this up. And the slowest that uh, mine can go on this one, I can actually get it to like it's 50, but the slowest I can get it to go with this belt combination is 324, which is okay. I think that works. Now again, all of this is food safe, so if I want to use this for a fruit bowl 
or anything else, I certainly can. And I'll just speed it up to about four or five hundred. And go ahead and just rub it with the same cloth. Just sort of giving that polish in there. about a thousand. Do some buff in here. And again, this first round is just to get rid of the stuff, just to get it off the bowl. And you can see that it is coming off. And at the same time, it is heating it up and buffing it in there too. But my main goal with this pass is to get as much of it off as possible. So now I got a new piece here, and I'm gonna go up to about 1,200. You can go a little faster if you want, but I'm just heating it up now. So take your time moving it through. Get a nice heat on it to really set that polishing compound up into the bowl. And nice thing about this is that they, it works both on the wood and also on the resin. And there you go, look at that, that's just that's just a gorgeous finish on it. That's a nice finish there. Everything looks good. I think I will put one more coat of wax on it, but that's about it. The outside just looks spectacular. Inside looks good too. All right, so let me put one more coat on and we will be done. Okay, and there it is, all finished and looking good. So I'm, uh, I'm extremely happy with this way this bowl has come out and uh, I'm just gonna flip it around now get it on the cold jaws finish up the bottom side do the same type of finish as is right here and this bowl is gonna be done Okay, so as you can see, I'm pretty happy with this bowl. I'm, I'm happy the way it came out. I love the contrast between the wenge and the maple. Um, I'm a little off center here, but again, like I said, it's gonna be you know moon rising or moon setting, depending on which way I'm holding the bowl. Yeah, but uh, other than that, very nice bowl, uh, nice finish on it. I'm real happy with how this came out, and I look forward to showing you the next one with the open site. So now let's check out some close-ups of this bowl. <laughs> 